Hi everybody, my name's Claire from Rainbow Acrylics. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'm going to do another straight pour tonight, but not with one puddle, as a lot of straight pours are, but with lots of puddles. Um, I'm going to vary the size of the puddles. I'm gonna have probably three larger puddles and then some smaller puddles, um, because I think it gives a really interesting effect having different size puddles of uh, paint on the canvas. Um, I'm using some very, very deep colours, so some blue, some purple and some red. Um, so I'm slightly worried it's gonna end up quite dark, but I'm gonna also mix in some gold, some white and some silver, just to try and try and lift it and to separate those colours. Um, so let me show you what colours I've got here, uh, ready here. So this is what I've chosen. So um, I'll go through them, I'll show you what I've got. So um, Royal and Langnickel Thalo Cyanine Blue, Amsterdam White, Montmartre Purple, Montmartre Gold, um, Windsor & Newton Galleria Acrylic Alizarin Crimson, and then Pebio Studio Acrylic Silver. So I've, I've put my cup, my paint in all my cups here. What I've decided to do, the white, I've measured the same amount of white as the other colours, but I've divided it in, into three. So there's a little bit of white in there, a little bit of white in there, and a bit of white in there. And that's the order I'm going to layer the cups. So I've split up the dark blue, the dark purple, and the dark red. I've deliberately not put white either side of the red because I don't really want pink. I might get some pink, which is which is a risk. It's fine if I do, but I'd rather try and avoid it if I can. Um, all these paints are mixed with PVA glue and water, and I will put the uh, recipe in the description of this video for you. The cups I'm going to layer up, I've got three of these little silicon cups, and then I've got five, I think I'm gonna try five, of these little tiny paper coffee cups. Um, so three big and five small, so eight cups in total. Um, I am going to, I'm gonna layer them in this order. I want to try and get two layers of each color in each cup, if I can. So I've just, it's, that's gonna be quite a small amount of each color. So I'm just starting just with a tiny bit of silver in the bottom of each of them. I don't like too much of the first colour in because the first colour in will be the last colour out. So I think if you have too much, it just leaves a very large centre to your puddles, which I don't think looks quite as nice. I quite like a, a bit of a multicoloured mixture in the centre. So that's just a tiny bit of silver in each. So let's then add a little bit of red. These are very thick paints. I've deliberately kept these really quite thick because the thicker they are, the less likely they are to mix and to blend. So I'm hoping we'll get some quite separate colours once this is poured out. My canvas is a 40 by 50 centimetre. I've put push pins in the back and I've just levelled it to make sure that it's completely flat. It needs to be totally level. Otherwise, once this heavy paint is on here, um, as it's drying, if it's not level, it will just slide and it will tilt. So I've got three large cups. I'm going to start with those. Just pop them here. I'm going to do a puddle roughly here, here and here, with hopefully some gap in between. And then I'm going to um, put the little puddles in between. 
So let's start over here. So my first, first puzzle. Right, I'm really, really happy so far. What I love is that that blue next to the white. Let's see if I can show you. I'm going to hit the tripod so I can't show you. Or well, in fact, yes, I can. I'll turn it around. Can you see the blue right in the centre, the blue next to the white? That's worked perfectly because it's just lightened up that blue. Really pleased with that. Right, I'm going to put another puddle over here. So this is so interesting. Where's the red? So the red is very obvious here. I can hardly see any red. It looks a little bit browny, but there's, there's just hardly any red. How interesting. Right. And then this one over here. And this one's totally different again. Where's the white? It's so interesting. You layer up the cups, I or what feels like identically, and yet they come out totally different. I think that's one of the things I love about straight pours with lots of puddles is you you can't plan it. You can't. You will never know exactly how it's going to turn out, despite knowing what colours you're going to put in, and it's just a wonderful surprise every time you empty a cup of paint onto the canvas. Wow, so different again. Right, this is a really good amount of paint. Uh, there's, there's quite a bit on here, but I've got now my five little cups. So I'm just gonna think where how I'm gonna do this. So if we did one, two, three, four, not sure yet. Let's just let's just go for it, see what happens.
Right, I'm really happy so far. It is quite dark, but I think once it's stretched out, I think it might lighten up a little bit. So I'm just gonna give it a good torch. There's lots and lots of bubbles. And for once, I'm really happy with the amount of paint I've got. I haven't got too much for a change. I always tend to mix up too much, but I actually think this amount of paint for this size canvas is gonna work quite well. There's lots of bare canvas at the moment, but as this gets tilted out, it should stretch quite nicely. Um, I've got a little bit left over, um, white and silver, and I'm just thinning it down slightly. So I'm just going to put that around the edge um, as a flow extender, just to help these puddles flow nicely over the canvas. So I'm just going to, uh, this will all be poured off, but this will just help this to flow. This will all be tilted off, sorry. Right, let's work out how to tilt this. So there's a gap in the middle, that's fine. That will hopefully disappear quite quickly. So I think the idea to start with, I'm just going to try and stretch it to get as much of the canvas covered as possible. Right, that's my gap closed up. Yeah, it's sliding really nicely over here. It's not really sliding over each other, over itself. Maybe a tiny bit, but not much. And that's because it's pushing against that gray paint. Right, that is quite a lot of the canvas covered. Let's give it another good torch. Right, I think looking at this, I'm going to first of all tilt over this corner. This to me looks like the small, one of the smaller puddles. So if I can tilt that first, then that I can pull it back and hopefully stretch the rest of that out. So I'm just going to get the paint, the weight of the paint down in that corner and then just go off the edge. Perfect. And then just bring the paint, the weight of the paint back. And then I think I'm going to come off this edge here. And then again, I'm just bringing the weight of the paint back to the centre. Right, this is opening up really nicely. I was slightly worried I was going to lose this puddle here, but I've managed to save just a little bit of it.
Right, I'm just bringing the weight of the paint back to the center a bit more and then we can have a look at it. Wow, <laughs> what a, an intense painting. There's a lot of blue. My concern is that it's going to dry quite dark because the, the colors tend to darken as they dry. But some of these colors are amazing. I think I should have put a bit more white in. So I'm just looking at the composition. I've got every single puddle still on here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is a massive puddle up here. And I'm wondering if that if that gold looks is, is a little bit too much there. So I could tilt some of that off, but then if I did, I'd lose that lovely lighter blue area. I just wonder if I'll leave it exactly as it is. I wonder if I can open this up here at all. Oh, and I've just noticed I haven't quite gone over the edge down there. So I'm just gonna tilt it this way slightly, just get that to tilt over the edge. So it's very dark in this top corner. Over here. So I'm wondering if I should try and just tilt a little bit more of this off so I can open it up the central open up the central parts a bit more. Let's try it. And then as I'm tilting it back, I can see it opening up more. Right, I think I'm going to keep all this paint now on the canvas. I think I'm done tipping paint off. So I'm now just looking at the composition. Wow, this has opened up beautifully over this side. <laughs> there is such a lot going on in this painting. Right, I think I am done. I'm just gonna touch up the edges, then I will show you. I'm absolutely loving it. Um, I, it's so crazy, so bright, so just so some dramatic and powerful somehow. The colors are just so strong. Um, I did tilt a little bit more off camera. Uh, this corner here was so dark, I tilted a bit off this puddle here to get rid of the dark blue here and a little bit more off there. Um, and I'm really pleased I have because it's opened up some of this white um, a bit more just to lighten it. It's going to be a dark painting. There's nothing getting, there's no getting away from that. But I think just by tipping that extra bit of dark off, I think it's gonna help. It's gonna lighten it up slightly. So look at these amazing effects. So many cells, so many details. Um, and what I love about this process is this is just with PVA glue and water. There's no expensive pouring medium, no Floatrol, no, yeah, look at that, almost, almost like a lacing effect. This is just paint, glue and water. And look at those folds, you've got such depth in it. It really looks 3D. I'm really enjoying doing puddles of different sizes. So you can see where the large puddles are. It one's here, here, and here. So they're the three big ones with the with the gold centers. And then you can see one, two, three, four, five. You can still see the small puddles as well. And I just think that makes it just more interesting. The colors are beautiful. 
the cells, I just I just don't know where they're coming from. They're just just absolutely gorgeous. Um, that's it looks very orangey there. So that's the red and the gold. Just look at that. You can just just keep looking. It's just so interesting. Definitely another crazy one. Now this is an interesting section. This bit here, you've definitely got some greenier tones in there. And I think I think that's probably the blue and the gold mixed together. Wow, what what an interesting one. So I will be back when it's dry. Here's the dry painting. I'm so pleased with it. It's very dark, so I think my first criticism would be I should have added a bit more white or thicker layers of white where I did put the white in, but it's just so, so dramatic. Um, let me take you in for a close up because the details are just amazing. I'm so happy with them. Um, you've just got such depth. Don't they just look like little shadows underneath, I don't know, little tadpoles or something? Um, there is so much detail in this. Um, the colours are gorgeous. I said I didn't really want pink. I've got a slight pinky line there. Um, I think it it is red, but because it's mixed with some white or silver next to it, it does look a bit more pinky than I was wanting, but it really, really doesn't matter. Um, there are just so many cells. It's the blue that just seems to have popped up everywhere. It's so, so pretty. I'm not sure I've ever done... Um, a straight pour with quite so much details, quite so much going on. Um, there's not, I don't think there's particularly a focal point of this painting, um, which often it's, it's good if there is because it draws your eye to it. Um, I just, I'm not sure where you look first, um, but I think overall the composition I'm, yeah, really, really happy with. Great, thank you so much for watching this video. Please let me know what you think of this piece. I know it's quite it's quite bold, it's quite crazy, um, but let me know what you think. Do you think it works? Um, yeah, I'm really happy with it, but I'd love to know what, what everyone else thinks. Great, thanks so much for watching, everyone. Bye.